What up, YouTube? This is Daniel Rucker with True Table. Welcome to the table. Today, I'm going to be discussing why my channel exists, what motivates me to do this, and I got a little clip for you to check out. You know when I jump on this camera, you know what I do on this channel. I gets cooking. That's why I'm here. You know what it is. So without further ado, strap in, take a seat. Let's get it. I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy for no reason. I don't just wake up and decide to flip the switch and be like, okay, it's time to go to jail. No, I'm a series of events that leads to an ultimate repercussion of you being like, oh shit, this bitch is wild. You right, uh, you right. So we didn't have to be here. This was a series of events. And the fact is, at the end of the day, you are crazy for even testing the limits because you were warned. I came with a full-on warning label. Don't try me. And we'll be fine. And you want to tickle me Elmo, bitch. <laughs> Gentlemen, why I chose this particular clip. One, it illustrates my points more often than not. See, they say... In psychology and when you learn when you're teaching people things when you're showing people things that using visual aids is a way to kind of enforce your point and i'm enforcing my point gentlemen my channel exists for multitude of reasons but one of the reasons is that i want to be able to give as much information and as much real life experience as much uh, lived experience as much as observed experience as possible so that my guys my gents true table family my men do not experience a woman like that obviously she was putting what i would consider um, a dramatic effect on her whole spill but see women like that exist there are girls who are totally okay with conducting themselves in that manner and see what i want is to be able to help you guys to identify those type of toxic traits, those type of cuckoo-like things, those types of crazy outlooks, mindsets, temperaments, and characteristics way before you get caught up in a situation that you may not be able to get yourself out of. So, my guys, gentlemen, a lot of what needs to take place is that you need to once always operate in a state of abundance. What does that look like? that looks like is that you have to understand that every girl is not the only girl or the end she is not the key to the kingdom she is not the 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 nas in your engine the the difference in your in your your 40 year for your 40 yard dash the the seasoning to your your meal she's just a woman and i think more guys need to level set their viewpoint now do i blame you guys collectively do i make it to where it's like it's all your fault no it is not entirely your fault but it is partially your fault why because we have a system a media machine that plagues on our minds from the time we're little boys to the time we're teenagers to program us to believe this nonsense that comes with dealing with women I'm here to tell you from lived experience. I'm here to tell you from what it is being in these trenches, living this life, being successful at being able to talk to women, being successful at being able to date the prettiest of them, you know, um, smash the prettiest of them. All the things collective. Most guys I'm learning do not get the experience of attractive women. Now, some may be asking, well, now you're talking, Daniel. How do we get there? How do we go from not being good with women to being an expert with women? It's a loaded question, but I'm glad you asked. One of the things it requires, and I've said this on my channel before, and I'm going to reiterate it. It's going to be something you're going to hear me say on a regular basis. Gentlemen, you have to understand and be solely convinced that you are the best that she ever had, the best on this planet. You have to be sold on yourself. A lot of people talk about and phrasing it from a place of self-love and you know, you gotta love yourself, you gotta value yourself. And I agree with all those sentiments. I agree with all, if not most of them. But I understand from 
transitioning from a simp to a complete man. I understand what it's like to view life in this way where, you know, uh, you, you envision, I guess, getting the attention of the girl that you have a crush on or dating the prom queen or whatever the heck it may be. And somehow, some way, it's going to make a difference in your life. I understand being in that state of mind because many, 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 many years ago, many moons ago, I used to be in that same state of mind. And I had to grow to understand that not a, most of that stuff was nonsense. Most of it was BS. It wasn't until I grew to understand, gentlemen, that everything started with me. Everything started and ended with me. So once I got a grip on my perspective, once I got a grip on my emotions, once I got a grip on the fact that all of what I thought it was wasn't really what it was, things changed. There came a point that females stopped being a problem. There came a point to where I started loving myself. There came a point to where I started setting a certain standard. There came a point to where I stopped subscribing to mistreatment, subscribing to less than stellar treatment. See, I no longer allowed for a woman to come into my atmosphere and dictate the terms. I dictate the terms. It's my life. It's my program. Does this take time? Absolutely. That time predicated on you. It all depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Some guys, they may be on a journey to where they want to be, you know, the mag daddy of the year, you know, get to the, the player's ball and all that stuff. <laughs> and that's fine if that's your goal. There's some guys who just want to be good enough to put himself in a position to approach a girl, make her laugh, have a good conversation, her reciprocate, her find him attractive, so on and so forth. There's some guys that just want one girl. That's fine. But you, gentlemen, have to decide and determine what you want it to be. So I know you guys are curious. And I haven't done it in a while. So a story time. I'll go ahead and share with you what my goal was. My goal was to get to a place where I was ultimately in control of my reaction and my response to women. What do I mean? One, I wanted to take the blinders off because, man, I was um, very naive. Two, I wanted to see what it really was. My ultimate goal, gentlemen, was to get in the mind of a woman. Scratch that. It was to get in the mind of many women. And what I mean by that is that, see, I always knew at a young age that girls thought different, females thought different. And I thought that if I could somehow, some way, get as close to understanding their logic as possible, get as close to getting behind enemy lines and understanding the, the, the process that is their mind, that I will ultimately become successful with women. Did I complete my goal? Hmm. Not quite. Now, what I mean by me not completing my goal is, see, I set out to do one thing, but in turn, what ended up happening is that I actually uh, grew to understand and, and learn myself better than I have before. In the pursuit of trying to understand the psyche of women, it's because I felt like, you know, if I could understand them, then I could make it easier to get them. If I could grasp the, the process, then this would make it just cake. It's a cakewalk now. But through that journey, gentlemen, I learned about myself. I learned how I was misinformed, how I was not quite clear on self. And I had to really do a lot of soul searching and do a lot of questioning and internal work. And those things consisted of why do I want a girlfriend or why do I want to hang out with this one or what value is she really going to bring into my life other than the fact that I like the way she looks other than the fact that she smells good and this and that and so on and so forth and a part of that journey helped me to really identify things that was going on with me as far as my perception because to be honest with you guys because that's what I do I'm you know I am ultimately Daniel Rucker on your table and I'm here to you know 
keep it authentic, keep it legitimate. See, I thought that if I could tackle a, a young lady and position her in my life, that it somehow, some way was going to give me some sense of security, some sense of identity and validity, some sense of being able to ultimately accept myself at the fullness of how I see myself in my head. And that's just me being transparent with you guys. That is the wrong thing to do as a man. No woman, I repeat, no woman on the planet, gentlemen, is powerful enough, valuable enough, pretty enough to ever be enough for what is necessary for you to learn and develop as a man, independently, solely. They're just women. They don't fly. They don't have superpowers. Half of them can't even cook now. Pretty basic. And what I learned was that it was never really about her. In fact, it didn't even matter who it was. It was about me. It became about me. It became about pushing myself. It became about the challenge. It became about how did I view myself, you know, day to day, in life, in the world, so on and so forth. So through that development, what I, what I, once I got to a place to where I identified the issues and the problems, now I started putting myself in a position to essentially desensitize myself to the allure that was gorgeous women. And what I mean by that is that I only shot my shot at the pretty ones. I only shot my shot at the ones that most dudes would be intimidated to talk to. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to be able to live in the reality that I already see myself. See, the one thing I did derive from pretty women, and let's just be clear, pretty women have social currency. There is some level of val validation or value to their aesthetic. So I will admit that that is factually true. You walk in a room with a gorgeous woman on your arms, game over. It, 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 it brings a certain level of value. It just is, I didn't make the rules, that's what it is. But what I needed to do, no scratch that, what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to remain comfortable in the environment that was a pretty woman, in the exchange. It's kind of like when they say, you should be able to go into a certain store. Let's take Louis Vuitton, for example. See, if you're used to shopping at Ross, Ross is messy, Ross is disorganized, Ross is cheap, you know, and there's a lot going on in Ross, right? And if that's where you're comfortable, then that's where you'll stay mentally. I needed to get comfortable with Louis Vuitton types of women. And the way I did that is that I put myself in a position to interact with Louis Vuitton like women aesthetically. Just like going to the store, if you frequent the store, if you, you know, make Louis Vuitton a part of your regiment when you're shopping, you know, if you shop, then Louis Vuitton no longer becomes foreign to you. It becomes comfortable. It becomes second nature. It becomes the standard. And that's essentially what happened to me. A pretty woman was no longer out of my reach. No longer was this euphoria that I had created in my mind at some point when I was growing up or maybe it was movies or maybe it was music you know I grew up in the 90s so R&B and all that stuff was intense to say the least <laughs> but anyway uh that's what it was necessary for me gentlemen I had to project myself and really get to the image of myself because the one thing I did have growing up as a young man is I had an idea of a positive image of myself. I did, it was there. Society, my environment, my interactions, certain things going on didn't allow me to, you know, um, embody that certainty 
at every moment because it was met with rejection. It was met with dismissal behavior. It was met with letdowns. It was met with disappointment. So here I am fighting for this image because I know I'm dope. Like in my mind, I like I know I'm dope. Like <laughs> I knew that. I, I, I felt it. It was an instinct, you know. And But I had to fight to get there. Like I had to push past every aspect of, you know, not being picked by, you know, maybe the prettiest girl in school at those levels. And trust me when I say those levels, I was young, middle school, high school, which I shouldn't even been thinking about girls at that moment anyway, because it was dumb and stupid, whichever. But anyway, wouldn't, re wouldn't change a thing. It was necessary. Um, I had an image of myself and my image was, I knew I was supposed to experience certain things. I knew that it shouldn't have been the way it was being. I knew that my experiences wasn't supposed to be my end, wasn't supposed to be my reality. And for whatever reason, uh, for a number of reasons, those experiences weren't matching up with my image of self, my vision of self. So anyway, I fought, I pushed past, and I eventually came to a point to where not only on top of reading, but observing other men, older men, men around my age, uh, certain things, I started to embody uh, what it is that I ultimately want to accomplish. And that was getting in the mind of women, understanding how they think, understanding how they view things, understanding their social cues and so on and so forth and all the psychology behind it to a point to where I eventually aligned with my mental self, my state of mind that I knew, you know, Daniel, you, you're cool, you're suave, you're chill, you're smart, you know, the things that I said to myself to develop self. And what ended up happening, gentlemen, is that everything that I sought out to accomplish as far as assuming that I was getting to learn the mindset of women was really learning myself. And I was able now to not only get comfortable with the Louis Vuitton like women, I was able to consistently put in the environments where I was interacting with these women where they no longer became out of my reach. They became my norm. And I was projecting everything that I had mentally as well as, you know, physically and so on, practiced and developed to be. So with all of that said, I want the gentlemen, the men, the young men, who listen to the sound of my voice, who tune into the channel and digest the content, to take from it, to always take care of number one. Always make sure that you're solid first so that you could avoid the nonsense and the craziness that exists with some of these women. So that is all I'm going to leave you with today. Thank you for tuning in to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the True Table family. You made a great choice. I appreciate it go ahead and hit the like button. If you're hearing me for the first time, go ahead and subscribe, share the content. I so appreciate it. And I'm going to continue to bring some more content later on in the week. You guys be easy. Take care. Until next time.